Create Studios podcast. We in the building with my guy, Lucky Lucci in the building. Man. It's Lucci. It's Lucci. <laughs> Uh, appreciate you coming out. You coming out from the Folk One Five? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Out there in Frisco, across the bridge, man. Had to pay the toll. Got the mail fast tracked in. Well, you probably got it on an account with you, man. I don't know. <laughs> with me, they be mailing hella shit. Uh, thank you for coming on the podcast today, man. Uh, we're talking about some music, love, and life, man. Over here. Um, appreciate you, dog. Absolutely, man. Thank appreciate you, you dog. Thank you. This has been my guy for a minute. Hit it. You record with Brock downstairs, man. You and Brock are the team duo. Brock's a cool to record with, bro, because, you know, one, there's not that many, like, female engineers in the game, right? And, like, it's just kind of interesting. I know clients kind of trip out when they say, like, what? And then, like, but she gets down the bars, and she really and she really just, like, messes with rap. You know what I mean? Man, she, she recorded my best song. She recorded my best songs ever that I've ever recorded in life. You know, I've, and I've recorded hundreds of songs. And once I met up with her, I was surprised too. My homies were surprised too. They were like, you know, I mean, no disrespect to a female, but she, you know, she's dope, and she's making you sound dope. And the and the you know the chemistry in the studio was like, you know, we barely even have to uh, talk that much. You know, I just go in there and I rap and I scheme out the songs, and she just tweaks them out. And her creativity with the with the mixes and everything that she does to the songs makes them sound. Just way doper than they've ever sounded. When I record with, you know, I record with a lot of different people. You know, I record mostly with my boy Sammy Cotto from Rap Dojo. Shout out Sammy Cotto from Rap you Dojo, I mean? man. But like my girlfriend said, like when my girlfriend first heard the song, she was like, from a girl's perspective, she was like, oh, you know, you sound good, like you know, you sound sexy, like you feel me, like. <laughs> hey, you want so, your girl you know, to say you sound sexy when you're rapping, on, though? Like, that's, come on, that's like, come on. Cause like not a lot A lot of guys do it For the women man You know what I mean So when you get that compliment Like it's a big compliment Cause it's only your voice On the song You feel me so. And I feel like my music Is is for the women You know what I mean It's for mm -hmm. everybody But I want the women To, to be buying the tickets and, and you know Sharing sharing the music And, and, and getting hyphy Cause you know wherever, wherever the pretty girl's at Everybody else gonna follow It's right. always been like that My whole life But like My music You know it, it's, it's really for everybody but like I got a girlfriend, you know I'm a, I'm around a girl every day. That's dope. That's dope. And I got yeah. a sister and a mom and a fucking um, grandma, and you know I just want. So you want to represent? I don't want to just make music that's just like tough guy shit. Yeah. You know, well a lot like, of that's fake. The guy that's fucking hella women. They, they, I, I tell you what, there's like two types of music where you think about women. Like it's this one where it's almost like a pornographic detail because that's not how it really is. You could tell that guy hasn't been with too many women before he was successful. And then there's guys like Drake. Well, you know he's kind of been around a lot of women because right, he right, sounds kind of right, soft. Right. Or, but that's kind of how them guys is when they really around a lot of women. And I got a baby mama too. Right. So right. I already got to deal with that. A daughter you know? or a son? I got a five-year-old son. Wow, okay. Gianni, shout out Gianni. Shout out Gianni. You know got him on the, got him you know on the forum. You know what I'm about? You know what I'm gotta about? put him on the forum. <laughs> and when did you put him on the forum? Right after, during? Probably like six months in. Six months in, okay. Six months to a year, yeah. Six yeah, months yeah. in. Baby mama relationship. And, and, and these are his real footprints. Wow. I, 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 oh, uh, those are the footprints. Okay, I, I didn't even him, know. So you gotta say him. that because it just looked like yeah. some stuff, you know what I mean? But yeah, no, I had him sit, or I mean, not sit, stand with, with painted feet. We painted his feet and he'd stand on a piece of paper. He's got some big feet for a six month old, damn. Yeah, it was like. You know, maybe six months to a year. Okay, maybe six it looks more like year. a year right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, six months yeah, yeah, is taking yeah, yeah, up yeah. half your like, forearm there. He was, he was there, Bigfoot, like. though. He was Bigfoot, though. Right. He was Bigfoot, though. I got you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I got it's like six months. This kid is huge. Sign up to the NBA, man. Right, right. Uh, he, he's a hooper, too. He's a hooper. He plays basketball, too. I love See, I love basketball. Mm -hmm. You're talking to a guy that plays it every day. For real? I play it every day at the gym. People go, is, is that for real? And then I'd be hooping on him, man. Because I love basketball because... It's a game where you can't really determine how they play from how they look. You know right. what I mean? It's like it's like a lot of chess. Right. Because you could be a small dude and just shoot. And since a three is worth more than one, you know, you could win. It's just a wild game to me. Yeah, I've been playing since I was eight. Yeah. And, you know. I, it's I, fun, right? It, it's super fun. And it's fun to go at people that, that are, are really good. Bro. That and makes it even more fun. And sometimes you get, like, it's like the weirdest shit happens within the game. Like, life. Like, you get all the good players on one team. They don't always win. Sometimes they be playing against these nerds that play with each other with a pass well and do all the dirty work. Well. Do you know what I mean? Like, and, you, and you play with some OGs that got so much skill. So much skill. And they be playing, you know, they've been playing their Young whole dude life. running around crazy, you know being I mean? hell of athletic, and the OGs like, win. Look at Luca. You know, look at Luca. He, he played like He'll, 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 he'll do the. You got to talk ah. closer to the mic, Lucci. You really, yeah. He'll he'll do, he'll do the he'll do the pump fake, 
this way, look that way, and yeah. then shoot. It's yeah. always like Luca. He's, he's always yeah. like misdirecting the defender. Luca, and, and those are skills. Luca and the other dude from Serbia, Jokic, play like they've been playing like an OG for years. You know what I mean? You can move this around if you're just comfortable. Um, right, right, right. But like right, they've been right. playing like oh geez, man. Like when you look at Luca's game, you set it on point, bro. Like Luca just he he pump fakes a lot. Luca's like European Larry Bird. Yeah, you feel me? He don't miss. You yeah, know? And, you know he he's really really talented. And I love I love the league. Yeah. But obviously, it's, it's Golden State still. Even Golden though we State, losing, hey, I'm glad you said that because you know we losing. <laughs> Brandon, but Brandon Pajemski has that old school type of game. You, to me, right where he plays, like, that boy look kind of seasoned. Like he's been playing for a while because just his little pump fakes and the way he drives and takes his time. Like even even Curry and Clay, you know, even Curry and Clay, you know, all that running around and then the pump fake and then the one dribble pull ups and then just the creating space. Like Curry was like. He's, he is the best at it still to this day. Absolutely the very he's still, best. He's still in his prime right now. The very best. Clay Thompson, too, plays like the guy at the gym that's an OG that's just like a sweet ass jump shot. <laughs> but he don't miss. I played against people like that. I yeah, played they against don't miss. Like that. They don't miss. They don't miss. Clay you know? is crazy guarded. You know, he's going to miss because the way he's guarded. You know what I mean? But you've been at the Chase Center? I haven't been to the Chase Center yet. You've been there? Bro, my first job, I did an internship at a lumber yard. And we used to uh, we used to, we used to do deliveries from for wood to uh, the Chase Center. Okay. And then we were end up, uh, we were able to go inside before it was built. Like when it was all cement and, and concrete. Like before the stands were in there, before anything was in there, we were, we were in there because we were, we were working in there. That's dope. And there was a ton of people that are, that are working from the city because they hired a bunch of local uh, you know, local unions. And you've been to the Oracle too? Not in hell long. Okay, honestly. okay. Not in okay. hell long. I'm an Oracle baby, man. That's what yeah, I like. Not the not lawyer long. Game I've been there lawyer. before, though. I've been there okay, before, yeah, though. But, yeah. I, but I was like Baron Davis and fucking right. Monte Ellis. It's a while times. ago. But it's a, it's a considerable difference, though, right? Right. No, yeah. It's, yeah. It, it, it's, it's a little, yeah, it's a little different. It's definitely a little different. Chase, Chase Center is, is huge. I mean, Chase Center is, is huge. Dude, it's, you know? it's one of the best stadiums in the NBA right now. Yeah, Chase Center is huge. It's, it's crazy. It's hella new. It's hella new. It's crazy. Coming from the 415 area, talk about the 415 culture. Where are you from the Mission? Like we're a part of SF. Like, well, I I went to school in the mission. Okay, and my mom's from the mission. My dad is is from from the city too. You have he, mission vibes. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I went to hella different high schools though. You know, and I did a lot of moving when I was growing up. Mm. Like. I wanted to be in the city as much as I could, but I, I spent all my elementary school years, and then my mom wanted to take care of me, mm. and she wanted she wanted to take me for middle school. So I I ended up trying to go live with my mom out in the valley. So I got, you know, I got, uh, I got connections, you know, in the Valley too, you know, like all around California. And valley, mom, like Livermore, Pleasanton, something like, like that? all the way to Modesto, Modesto and Stockton, the real and Valley, okay, Tracy yes, and yes. Turlock and Patterson, and Patterson and, <laughs> and, 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 and she, she brought me out there. So I spent some time out there and I didn't like it. It's different. And, and I would get jumped and shit. Motherfuckers do not like motherfuckers from the Bay out it's there. It's pretty hood out there too in the Valley, right? Like it's rural. It's, diff like, it's just yeah. different. It's just yeah. different. Like, yeah. like, you know, I'm, I'm used to being in the Bay where, where motherfuckers are some real players. Yeah. You know, you never know who you're talking to and everybody's trying to get that bag and everybody, everybody's moving every day to hustle and everybody's moving every day towards something. And, and even people that are homeless be still got a bag. Even homeless people are active. In you know, <laughs> in, in, in the valley, like like no disrespect, no disrespect, but it's just less shit going on. So it's country people, people squad up. It's like country, and, and it's mostly, you know, I mean, there's different races, but it's mostly Mexican and white. Right, you know, it's mostly Mexican and white. You're there's a lot lying. of Mexicans out there, though. You're not lying. You know I mean, there's a lot of Mexicans out there. When you pass you know through, I mean? when you go on to Sacramento or whatever, it's like, damn, there's nothing out here. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I would I would get in fights out there, and I was getting expelled from school. And my dad and everyone was like, this is the first time you've been getting in trouble since you went mm -hmm. to the Valley. He said, like, when you was in the Bay, you, you know, you, you, you was doing your thing. And then, so I was like, you right. Like, I was like, I need to get the fuck out of there. But I was like, I got caught up. I was on probation and I was stuck out there and I was living with my mom and my, my dad moved, moved, uh, moved out of state to marry a different girl. And the only one that li still lived uh, in the city was my grandma over in Glen Park. When your, parents split, up. when your parents split, how old were you when they did that? Two years old. Two, oh, that's pretty young then. Okay. I was two years old. But your dad's still in your life. Yeah, yeah, nah. I made a whole mixtape with my dad. Oh, okay. Yeah, my pops, my pops is, is the realest. You live with your dad or you live with your mom? I live by myself. At two? Or no, no, no. <laughs> At two? I thought you were talking about right now. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Growing up, At uh, two, who got to raise you? Pretty much like, 
I mean, they fought. Well, they shared. They shared it. Yeah, so they fought. It, 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 it was both of them. It was both of them. Like two to five, you're here. Then five to eight, you're yeah, there. Right. It, it, it was yeah. both of them. But my mom kind of just started moving further and further away. Mm. And my dad was like really staying in the city. And he and he would you know work you know work construction and you know go out stay and you know kind of freelance. Gotcha. And uh, and just interesting. And my and my mom she ended up moving to Oakland mm. and then moving closer and closer to the valley until you know she's in the valley now. Until she, until she that's where she just made her home. But uh, my auntie went out there first and she got a fat ass crib. Right. You know she got, a got fat, fat ass, ass cribs in the valley. She got a fat for ass cheap. two story for cheap. And I'm like damn I'm like this is a nice ass house. They're so nice. my mom just. She just nice. followed along and, and obviously she had a different Man You know A different husband at that point A working husband And, and, and he was like <laughs> was Yeah 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 my, my, my stepdad And then went out there And then you know my They had my sister And my brother I love my little sister I love my little brother You know Shout out Kendra and Kobe You know I got, I'm, a, I'm a big bro But I was I was the oldest one I'm, And I'm my, da my dad's only uh, you know, my mom has two different kids. So they're from half different brothers, man. half brothers, right? Are they yep, okay, yep, they're half brothers. Okay. Yep, what yep, is that like? Yep. I never had a half brother. They're like real brothers, right? For sure. I mean, we all got the same mom. Mm. You know, we all got the same mom. I'm just, I just, I got a different dad, and then my sister, and my brother got a different dad. So you could, you could tell we got the different dads. Yeah. But at I the same time, like that, yeah. At the same time, it don't change shit. Mm. You feel I me? Mean? It, it really don't change shit. They don't fight for them. It's just like. I'm big bro Right You know I'm, I'm not their daddy So I'm So you know I'm not gonna be as Easy on them Like I'm not their daddy Like right. you know They gotta get Get it on their own And, and you know I, I just have to Teach them and, and guide them And be there Whenever they fail Right Because they will And and thankfully I already failed I already fucked up Hello times in my life Right And, I, and, I, and I, you know I, I've learned from those Experiences And I can just Put them on with that game Because I was raised By the OGs I just I didn't have no big brother I, I only had uncles And OGs And my pops You feel I me mean? Yeah So you know it, It's it's dope being a big brother You know And, and it made it easier Having a son Because it was like The same type of deal Except for my son I could be way more Hands on Like I am their daddy And your son has A family structure now Right He has yep. the dad Which is the grandpa Mom which is the, So they, they're all involved And in all that like, Yeah okay, yep. So they're, I'm sure they were happy When that happened right? grandparents and, and they even I mean yeah. My mom and my dad You know They still see each other But you know I'm sure they got Did they get closer When you but, had the grandkids obviously, obviously there was beefing There okay, was beefing, beefing There was beefing the For like time. the first Fucking 10-15 years okay. Honestly But did know? the grandchild Help that situation Out a little Because it usually does no, nah, my 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 dad just held resentment. Okay. He, he wanted he wanted you. my mom he he wanted my mom to apologize. He was hurt. He was hurt. He was hurt. Oh, your dad loved her, man. He was hurt. He was hurt. You know, and not to speak badly on my mom, but it's because my mom went off with a, with a different dude, and that hurts, and that, and that had different different uh, you let's know different ideas. I hope that's not you because that you know hurts. I mean? I've seen a lot of men in that situation not get over it. Do you know what I mean? It, it's right. a it's a tough thing to go through when right. a girl's promising her I mean, life with you, then kind of takes it, it away. It took my dad. It damn near took my dad twenty fucking years to get over that shit. For real, I'm not really judging you him. Know? I've seen twenty worse. fucking years. I've seen dads lose their years. lives. I've seen people yep. take on drugs and alcohol. Yep. For a woman that's already with another guy, it's wild, man. What is? It's, uh, it's very tough. But my mom, like you know, I know why he's mad. Mm -hmm. But he also said like she grew up a lot, you know, or, or she, right. she 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 evolved. Well, a lot. what she, so, what your dad doesn't know, she probably corrected a lot of behavior in her second marriage and continued in her first. Because all women like kind of change up on the second marriage, learning from the first. So it sucks for your probably dad to hear that. He, he was nineteen. He was 19 She was 22 Dude you know Dude I mean? Dude you know Like I mean? all those mistakes She learned And you know, you know so. Cause they act very different In their second marriage I noticed I'm not trying to diss women But they usually act very different When they go through a divorce Like they, they kind of correct Not correct behavior But they just yeah. act different you know? But my mom She just moved right on She just yeah. She just moved right on I mean she wasn't really A, a dick to my dad But you know That's she, what she, women she, do just, She just moved right the fuck on That's what and, women and, do and my, and my dad Did not move on He tried But he just picked some Some women that I, right. I, I didn't think was was right for him, and, and it never was. But he would he would go off and and, and chase some of these girls, and, right. and they just weren't the right one. Right. Until now, finally he got a girl he got that a he really one. fucking right. likes, right. and that's good for him. That's but that, that helped him lose weight and right. build that confidence and really get on his man shit. You know, and took twenty years. I mean, love is real. You know, is that's, it not, that's the line between love and hate. Is it not easier for a woman to move on before a man, though? From how I see it, it is because it's, women it's are easy. constantly getting hollered at, and you know, guys, it could it could be like every couple of months or weeks or what. It's you like, know what, I mean? it's like, like what they like, say when men cheat. 
Men will cheat with a girl they don't even want to be with. Yeah, exactly. But women will cheat with a man that they want to fucking be with. They're not cheating to cheat. They're going to have sex. They're cheating to bond <laughs> in another direction. And they got options. I you mean, know, they're women. All I mean, the time. The whole time you know, they have women options. Got options. And especially today, 2024. Come on, man. It's all about sexy hey. red and Megan Thee Stallion and fucking Wait. and Lotto, you know, Bruh. women empowerment. Thank you feel you. me? Everything that's going Thank on right you. now in this fucking world. When women get mad at you, it's like Women deep. are fucking, they're pimping us out now. Bruh. Man, they pimping us out now. Like, when I'm in an they, argument. They peace. They Geez, they fucking you know they running games and, and we got to be smart. We got we got to stand up for ourselves and, and realize you know it's it's a mental battle mostly and just you don't can. just don't give in. And you can't put it on the pedestal. Yeah, don't give in. Yeah. <laughs> don't let it. Don't let. It's like don't, a don't give them the ammo. Don't give them the yeah, ammo. Don't should, give them the ammo. About your mom and your dad on the don't next give them pod. The and don't give uh, them the ammo because they will use it against you. You feel me? Yeah. And, and, and I don't know. I don't no, know. you're a hundred percent wrong with know. that. Going back to the point, though, uh, from from living out there in SF and, and traveling to those different schools, Mission, you said uh, other areas. Yeah, when I finally came back to the city, it was dope. Right. You know, because right. I was finally off probation. My mom sent me to military academy because I went to juvie. Okay. And then she didn't want me to be staying there, so she was like, they gave her a deal, you know, if he, if he does a, a year of What's military, military academy? academy? What it is that? SMA, Stanislaus, uh, Stanislaus Military Academy, you know, in Turlock. And it was a bunch of uh, retired military vets and you know they were drill sergeants and teachers and they, they would they would break us and we were all you know bothered juveniles you know we everyone in there had a record everyone in there was was fucking up school and i just like i wasn't like no hard-ass gangbanger I'm, I'm not a gangbanger you know or nothing like that i'm just from the city so i just i just stand on what i stand on and, and I'm, I'm i only follow myself and why and, were you there then I was there because I was slaying weed. Uh. Feel me? I was there because I was making money because I was fucking hustling because that's all I know how to do. I, I wasn't working. I was working on them streets. You feel me? I'd get my money. I slaying want, weed I want, in high school? I want Jordans. I want nice fits. I mean, all, all the shit. I mean, that's just like, that's like a... Uh, that's a city thing. I, I know a lot of motherfuckers that that's young and just they just hustling. They just find a way to get it, and so they get in trouble, and then they find out they don't really want to do it for for too much longer. Or some people get addicted and they want to do that shit forever. Right. And you know, and it's easy too when you, when you got connections, and and, then, and and it's easy for you to, to sling a bag and, and make some money, and, and and you know, you buying wholesale. You feel me? And, and you can make profits, right. and you end up like, you know, fourteen <laughs> years old, and you got all the shit you want. You feel me? So I was like, I was being hell stupid, but you get arrested. Just, or did they just I got arrested I got snitched out okay. you know and the school um, kicked you out and that was an option to go to school right yeah was yeah, that, yeah, okay, yeah. That, right. that was an option to like kind of like clean my shit cause like when you're a juvenile it doesn't matter like you get in trouble all the time they, they could they could erase your shit once you're an adult do your parents Mostly. gotta pay for that service to go to a military academy no it was court ordered okay it was, it was court oh, ordered. okay okay no, cause court ordered. damn your yeah, parents no, had to pay for that oh no it was court ordered they just okay. they just wanted her to sign the waiver they were like do you want do you want this to happen cause I was too young to make my own decision so she just put me in there and, and, and honestly I cried the first day I went and then you know wow. and, then, and I ended up loving it why why um, why was it because of the, the experience and the emotional experience because they made me shave my fucking head and shave uh, my fucking facial hair off and fucking wear a uniform and, and be like you know like like damn near in prison you feel me like, like now, does that just, actually like, like change you else. does that actually help changing does that actually help <sighs> honestly like that shit just made me realize that does it that don't make matter you more angry that or? shit just makes me realize it don't matter what you do it doesn't matter you cut my hair off or cut my fucking facial right. hair off I'm still the same motherfucker right. you know what I mean and, and you either gonna be a leader or you're gonna be a fucking follower and everybody up in there you know even even those motherfuckers that want to follow other people and they want to be like oh, i'm part of this game i'm part of that that shit that's on them Right. They want to make those decisions. I'm cool with it. I don't. I don't care. You feel me? I don't care if you're right. I don't care if you're wrong. I just. I just need to worry about my own self and worry about my generational wealth so I can pass that shit down to my fucking family. Because. Right. Because you know when you in there, you like you know. I mean, what's the craziest so, story you've seen in there? I mean, craziest fucking, thing that happened. <laughs> Tell us. One of the drill sergeants drop kicked somebody because <laughs> there was fighting, and then one of, one of the students trying to fight the drill sergeant thought, thought he was ballsy, but he trying to fight a marine. He trying to fight a marine. You feel I me? Mean? Got drop kick. So the marine can you know actually I mean? do his thing. I mean, yeah, if he gets attacked, that's self defense. Well, you know what, what did mean? the marine do? That's self defense. He, the you marine started I mean? off with a drop kick, or like no, no, he he got attacked. I think this dude was like he was fucking. You know, it, it was a big ass brawl. It was like. You know, we had these all the time. Riots, you feel me? There was fucking riots in there. You know, motherfuckers be fighting and shit. You know, and, and it was mostly it was mostly about like because it was mostly North Days in there. It was mostly North Daniels, so so uh, there wasn't it wasn't popular to be on the blue side. It wasn't popular to be on the blue side up in there. You feel me? And there was other shit that was going on too. It was all types of like little gang politics, little kid shit. You know, and I just I just wasn't for that, and I never was 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 for that. I was more of like an athlete, and I was more of like. 
you know, I'm from the Bay, so I just got that Bay sauce and I just do that Bay shit, you feel me? But I was more like, you know, when, when we were in fucking military academy, if you fucked up or if you're doing wrong shit, they just smoke you. They just they just work you out until you exhaust it. Mm. Or when you first go in there, you, you go through this eight-week induction phase and it starts off 30 kids and only 15 kids make it out. Right. And then the 15 kids can actually start, uh, you know, taking classes. Mm. That's how it works. And, and I went through three inductions, or I went through like two or three inductions, because fucking I came in at the wrong time. I came in at the end of one induction, then I had to do another one. Then it was summertime, and then so I had to come back that fall and do another one. But I ended, I ended up loving it. Right. I ended up thriving in it because right. I was they was working me out, and I, I, I these motherfuckers that I was, that was real drill sergeants, Marines, and 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 Navy, and, you know Navy and Air Force, and you know all that shit. And I, I was like getting hella swole. I was getting mm-hmm. hella strong, and it was like I was thriving in that shit because I'm just. Honestly, I just have to adapt. I'm a Gemini. Yeah. I'm a Gemini. I gotta wherever I'm at. You know, you put me. You put me wherever I'm at. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to adapt. So, so have there's, to adapt. Nor- there's North Days and Serranos in there in the same building. Like, yep. Okay. And guys and girls too. And guys and girls too. This is crazy. This is like a reality yeah. show. And it's, like, and it's just separated. Don't they, don't they and it's just separated by grades. It's just separated by grades. There's a class each grade. That's how small the fucking school is. Uh, it's a I class say, each grade. Okay. One class. It's one like. You ever class. see a girl fight a guy in there? Uh, yeah, for sure. Okay. Easily. Can you tell us about that? Easily. <laughs> easily. Tell us the craziest easily. girl easily. crazy easily. fight easily. that you see. I mean, like, I've, I've, seen, I've seen bitches beat, beat motherfuckers up. You know, grab them by the ear and just boom, 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 boom. And just, you know, because these girls are doing push ups too. They're running with us too. You know, and, and the girls and are doing push ups too. The girls are doing pull ups too. You know, the girls are hopping the wall too. We had a little little course, you feel me? We mm-hmm. ran, you know, hopped the fucking wall and then fucking climbed the rope and all that shit. Uh, all that shit. But I was at that point. I was 15, and I was fucking 155 pounds, and I was a beast. Right. And I had fucking nothing could stop me, and I was like not heavy at all. Like nothing I did felt heavy right. at that point, and it was dope. And I was running. I was second place in in the fucking uh, two mile run. Mm. I was right behind this one uh, short soccer player, and he fucking you know soccer players they can run all fucking oh, day. Oh, soccer player, you that crazy I mean? stamina. Run all man. Fucking, and, you play soccer. End, Oh. No, I don't. I only play basketball, okay. I don't and, play and a little either. bit. Of, I, I mean, I'm not a football player, but I can play a little bit of football. Right. You know, I mean, yeah, I mean, pretty much that. That's it. And, and I like fighting too. I like fighting. I like UFC. You feel me? I, I did boxing. You feel me? And, and when I was when I was young, I did a little bit of karate. So yeah, you know, okay. oh, you gotta but, come to my friend's event. He's a amateur MMA fighter, man. Yeah, I, lo- I love I love MMA. That shit's the that's amateur just dope. scene's coming up dope. too, that's right? Just super dope. Like it's that's just, just super it's, dope. it's crazy to see because when we, when I was a kid, it wasn't really around. It was just boxing. So to see actually people really fight like this shit. And there's one drill crazy. sergeant that had a gym. There's one drill sergeant that had a gym. He said, you know, after school, there's you know a, a group of select kids that go work, you know, box and shit. Oh, that's go, dope. Go, so go. it took like select like, kids that could handle it though, right? And shit yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, and it was cool. It was cool little stuff like that. And and honestly, you know, if I would have stayed there, mm. I, I, I ended up doing my year and I did a little bit of extra time. You could have been a trainer and, or something. And, and, right? and I could I could have been a marine. Okay. I, was, I passed my ASVAB. I had all the physical stuff. That was that was easy. You know, we went through boot camp. You know, we went to to the military base in Dublin, Pleasanton. We we stayed for five nights. We did we did we did the week. You know, every everything. And, and I was on my way. That sounds then, like a dope program, though. To be it, really it honest dope. with you, it like was dope. if they can get dope. some real marines out dope. of that, you it right? was dope. They fucking troubled kids. Right. They're hard. I gotta imagine they make the best Marines. They're hard as they fuck. They would have to make the Marine. best ones, right? Like. They're hard as fuck. But, but then my Master Chief, because, you know, shout out Master Chief Blanks, he's the dopest. He, uh, he, he has a famous brother. You remember brother. these people. Yeah, he has, a famous, he has a famous brother because he's buff as fuck. He's like the buffest dude I've ever seen in my life. Like, you know, he, he's a uh, retired Navy, Navy uh, Master Chief. And, uh, and, and the master, uh, you know, there's only four master chiefs at a time in the Navy. Then they serve terms, and, 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 he, and I, I'm pretty sure he was a somebody, and he was working at that school. And and you know, he he really took a liking to me, and and uh, I was scared of him because he was so buff and so, just intimidating looking, you know. And, and when he spoke, everyone listened. Like even the other drill sergeants, they they. You feel me, like Master Chief? You know, he just had that presence, Commanded around. and I loved it. And I and I, he was my, and he, he wanted to be my mentor because he stopped me from whooping somebody ass because he was like, he he just he was just he just peeped me. He just peeped me. He was like, he's like, you know what? You meant you 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 meant for something else. Like you meant to like be somebody. Like you don't need to be up in here. You know, if you really want to go, you know, serve your country, that's one thing. But, you know, and he seen me play basketball at lunch every day, and I was the best. I was the best in, in the military academy. No one could f-
Okay, She's okay. my best. Check one, check two. Okay, we're back on Lucci, all right? Yeah. My bad, man. What were we talking about? Shoot, man. It was family. like finally just closing the chapter on the whole Valley thing, you know, when I was uh been a lot of trauma because your mom, man, <laughs> just divorced, second stepdad, and then went back and then pops. Okay, so that's and she ended up seeing she ended up seeing this lady. She was she was dating this lady that, you know, at first like she uh the lady had a husband and then he fucking killed himself. Yo. He fucking shot himself. And we were living there. And uh I was going to military school at the time. So that shit was like I knew him, you know, and, and that, that shit hurt me a lot. And uh, and he, he fucking shot himself in the head, you know. There was hella drama and shit going on over there. So that's yeah. pretty much what pushed them to go to Texas, and that, that's what propelled me to go back to the city. Because, like, once I told my dad that shit and my grandma that shit, they were like, man, you don't need to be out there. Right. You know? And, 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 and I mean, they gave my mom a chance, but, like, my mom's foundation just kind of crumpled when she – Got divorced from my stepdad Cause like When she was with my stepdad You know We was in Fat Crib You know Doing all types of stuff You know My stepdad is like You know My sister and my brother's dad Like he was always Financially there Like he was always like he, I mean he still is You know He always had new whips and, and boats And trucks And all types of shit You know He's all about the money And but But you know when, when we When my mom wasn't with him no more it just went downhill from there, you know. Just went downhill, but you know, my mom like she used to be. She used to work for a law firm. She used to be. A, she used to be a receptionist in Oakland for a law firm, and then she ended up, you know, wanting to be a nurse, and then she went to school, and then she ended up, you know, and that, and now she's taking care of disabled people. That's dope. And, and you know, I'm saying she's doing her thing, but now, but she also wants to like work at a school and be like a school nurse or something because like right. it's it's a lot easier. Well, she, she wants to help. That's cool. You know, you but know, she just she's it. always been into nursing. But like, yeah, when she was not with my stepdad no more, she was on her own pretty much, mm. and, and living with her was tough. Like we lived in Merced for the, for like six months or close to maybe a year, and it was tough. Like I was, mm. she was drinking you know bottles of uh, Jameson every day, and just in a deep depression. I was like. And I was running them streets every night, and, right. and I would run away a lot. I'd never cuss out my mom. Like I, I got too much respect for women. I got too much respect for my mom. I, hate, I just hated to see her like that, and I just, you know, wanted to make my own decisions. And I just, and I just did. And I just, I just didn't want to hurt her. I didn't put it in her face, but I was, I was doing my own thing. I was like, you know, taking the car, you know, going city to city, you know, <laughs> always hanging with people that was older than me. You know, especially in, in in the valley too. Like you know, I, I had a couple of homies that you know would give me rides anywhere I want to go, and uh, you know I was still moving around young, and, and, and it was a tough time. So that's why I was like, that's why just everything everything happened, and and I was I was free to go to the bay, and and my dad's side of the family agreed, so I went, and I went to John O'Connell at, at sixteen, and it was, and it was it was like back back in Frisco. And I remember the first day at school, I, I went, and you know I, I was fitted, you know I was fitted, but. Everybody else was wearing their best shit. It was like going to school at the mall. <laughs> it was crazy. Everybody, it was like the mall. We had a, I mean, we had a pretty big school. A lot of people went there. <laughs> he said you know? Cool. And it was in the heart of the mission. It wasn't Mission High. It wasn't as big as crazy as Mission High. But it was like, it was damn near looked different than Mission High because I think John O'Connell was like a newer built facility or whatever, you know? I feel like right. it was newer built. It had a different design. It, it had a pretty cool design right. to it. You know, two stories. It was, it was fat. And then that's where I met Sammy Cotto. That's where I met IMX Sebastian, who's uh, you know, he's, he's a my, video guy, right? Yeah, he's a video guy. Yeah. He, he got signed to Empire as creative nice. director. Dope, yeah. And he, he's he's been doing his thing. Like he's been doing his, his thing for real. And he, he came he came to my last session with Brock, and and watched me record uh, Most Hate in My City. He told me he's like, hey brother, he's like. That's hot shit. Like that's the dopest shit you ever fucking rap. Like that was the dopest that's shit you dope. ever made. And he's always been my homie. So that's, that just gave me more reinforcement, re, more reinforcement from someone that's working with big name people in the industry. Right. That my shit's dope. And that you know, and, and obviously he shot some videos for me. Like my first three videos, he shot them for me. That's dope. Just because we were we were hella tight homies, and, and I and I caught him at the right time when he when, you know he was just first barely starting uh, you know. Uh, Recording videos right. And he, he introduced me To some uh, You know Some hot names And shit It was dope You know And then uh, I also met You know My boy Vaughn I am I met You know I, I got introduced To the Sunset Youth Center Which is this This non-profit studio In San Francisco In the Sunset On 46 in Judah And, and, and uh, There's this There's this guy That I was my homie was, His name is uh, You know What's his name Andy mm. My boy Andy Got a uh, 
a internship to be an engineer at this nonprofit, and he heard, he heard me rap. I was rapping in the lunch line. I was just, I was a freestyler. I, I was just freestyler because like I don't know, the OG way. The OG way was like you can't freestyle, you can't be no rapper. So I was just always freestyling, and I was I was writing too. I, I wrote hella books. I wrote hella composition notebooks full of raps, but I never I never recorded. So he was like, bro. He was like, you need to go record. Mm. He was like, you need to go record. And then I was always like, I was already like playing for the basketball team too. I ended up making the team obviously. And I was, I was playing for the team, doing my thing. I didn't really get along with my coaches that much, but you know, my coaches were cool. I just like, I wasn't focused. I wasn't really focused in basketball at that point. I was, I was already falling in love with the rap shit. And I was always, I was already, you know, falling into that trap of, of, of being a fucking city goon and hang, hanging with them goons and hang, hanging with motherfuckers outside on the street. So like my, my basketball started slipping and my, my athletic discipline, my, my discipline for that, Stuff started slipping. And I was more into rapping at that point because it was newer and it was way funner. And I and I uh, and I fucking rapped my first verse at, at the studio, and it was like, damn, like you know, I, I, I rapped and this girl sang and fucking, <sighs> and it, it was clean and I was doing some hot shit. And then and then it was like, we want to put this on our album. We want to put this on our mixtape. You know, is that mm. cool? And I was like, that was before I was Lucky Lucci. At that point, I was Young Mac. I was Young Mac out the phone five. I was my first rap name. It was fucking hella hella. You know, not not that great. You know, for Young mm. Mac at the phone five. That was my first rap name, and then and then I was Lucci because my name's Luciano. I'm Sicilian Nicola Wednesday. I'm like Sicilian, uh, you know, Italian Mexican, and uh, so my so then so I was Lucci. They're like, we're gonna put you down as Lucci. <laughs> So then everybody was like, you know, they started calling me Lucci in the, in them streets and shit, and I and I, I ended up meeting Dina Rowe at at the studio. I met Nana. I met oh Dina all, Rowe, the set, uh, SMG. Yeah, I met fucking all sorts of people came through that studio. Like all I'm Des Mac. You know who else? Kind of remember like, you know, just uh, uh you know, G, my boy GQ. You know, a bunch of people was rap, rapping back then. You know, uh, Rhyme Easy. Rhyme Easy was, oh, was, was like Filipino did right. You know what I mean? yeah. That's my boy. I, I, yeah. I rapped with him. I got a song with him. I got a song with him on, on one of my tapes. Uh, you know, Faithful featuring Rhyme Easy. You know, he really fucked with me. And, and even back then, he saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. And after that song, I just like kept going to the studio, and it was it was free because I was I was youth and I was like going to school in the city. So I was like, I was just I was just there all the time. I was just there all the time. Every time after school, and, and there was girls over there too. So it was like go go Fun you know place to be. pop at the girls, bust some raps. You know, there's a little Seven Eleven right there, and the beach is like right down the street. So we were like Man. go kick it at the beach. You know, I mean we was young, smoking. When chilling. you're when you're an artist and there's like you know a studio I mean? that you used to go to, all those memories just seem super nostalgic, bro. Like bro. you know what I mean? Like the little cut spots bro. that are around the studio the little eateries that be around right the people that we you was, meet we was ghost riding the rip and somebody was shooting a video yeah and we was ghost riding yeah. the rip on, on, i in, mean don't the sunset, memories just the seem sunset. hella like ah <laughs> like, i look back at it we were being hella ghetto on the sunset because the sunset is yeah. not that ghetto you know right. that's that's the thing about it's san nice francisco yeah. that's the thing about san francisco is is it, it is different in the different neighborhoods like it, it is like the point or hunter's point is different yeah, than very, the mission very different you yeah. know the mission is different than the sunset very, you know yeah. you know downtown is different than all that shit Absolutely. you know yeah. and then there's even little italy and you know there's you know the wharf and there's like mm. just all these different places like there's different parts of san francisco Agreed. but i was mostly you know and i was mostly in the mission but I, I ended up spending a lot of time in the sunset it was really fun and uh, I, rec I was just recording hella songs and then um, I was learning how to engineer too I was learning how to engineer okay. yeah. and then I was making my, mix my own shit and then um, you know I just really I really just didn't know what I was doing I was having fun yeah. and then all, all those songs were pretty trash and I, I didn't really like put nothing out <laughs> probably maybe like a couple of, like SoundCloud songs you know or something like that I just you know but I recorded I, I eventually I recorded Baby on the Plug mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. and that was my first single that, that I officially dropped like on all platforms everything and Rhyme Easy mixed it mm -hmm. so shout out Rhyme Easy man he told me he, he, it was like a Shoreline Mafia beat and I was rapping on it and he was like, he was like, you trying to be like Shoreline Mafia, you know? <laughs> and then he, he was like, he was like, I think you could be doper than than I could think you'd be doper. Like I think you're a totally different artist. I think you should you should focus more on your lyricism, you know, and, and come with that energy, but, but be more like, you know, because a lot of people are trying to be like somebody Someone else, you know, and and yeah. but and the Bay is good because like you know, like you said, the Bay has those homies that just told you like, do you. Right. There's always a Bay Area homie that's like, nah, bro, do it like that. Like, fuck what they doing. Right, you right, right. So he just instilled that confidence in me, and he was like, man, you ripped that shit. And then, you know, and then eventually, you know, I, uh, you know, kept going to sc school, and then I got kicked out again. 
first first slang in the game. I got kicked in out of high game. school. This yeah. high school. Yeah, story, back yeah. In the, this, is, this is in the bay at this yeah, point. This okay. is in the bay at this point. So I was just like, oh, so you started doing rapping in high school then. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, right. yeah, and then you know, and then once I got in trouble again, I was like dating this girl, and then that ended up being my baby mama, and she oh. was like already out of high school. She was like 22, 21 or right, something like, right. and I was like sixteen or whatever. I was, like, I was like, I was doing my thing, man. I was, I was like, I was always in the women, man. I was always in the women. I just like, yeah. I mean, back in high school, I think about the women I was going for. I, I would not go for them now. For sure, they're a good you know? time back then. Though, but back right? then, it was it was it was it did the job. You know, yeah. it did the job, and we was just lit. I mean, uh, most people that know me, you know, just, they pretty much told me like, I never changed, except I became a dad and I really just manned up. But I, I was always lit. Like I was always the same. I dressed, dressed the same even before it was like really popular. Like 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 even slanging, you know, before it was really super popular. Like even fucking eight years ago, she was d a little different. It was just a little very different. different. Like, it was just very a little different, different, man. Very different. You know and. And, and motherfuckers hated on me like wearing sunglasses in middle school and shit. Right. And I was like, bro, I was like, what are you talking about? This is the vibe. I was like, this is the vibe. Yeah. I was wearing sunglasses, fedoras. It's sunny in California. You know what what are you talking about? They was even hating on my fedoras. And I was like, bro, this is too pimp. You know, this is too pimp for you. But, but then I was yeah. like, I let them get to me. I love and there, fedoras, there, was, there was a point where like I was trying to be like someone else and right. I was trying to dress like everyone else. Mm. But then I just like locked back in and really just. You know, decide to just. That's how you develop stay your like own me. style, though, is you adapt styles until you figure out what works. Because I used to rock a fedora until I realized like, my, my head's kind of fat, so it don't look on me right. Like, you got to have a slimmer head for a fedora. Right, right, I used to look right, like right. Odd Job from James Bond movies, bro. And I'm like, okay, let me right. not rock the fedora. But, like, you figure that out. Right, right, and right, the fedoras right, be right, expensive. Right. Oh no, wait, I mean, no, I had a I brim hat. Gifts. I'm sorry, I had a brim hat. That shit was expensive. No, I got them gifts because like my my family's Italian, so I just got gifted fedoras. Got and stuff. you. Got you. You even find some good fedoras you. at the flea market and you know yeah. thrift stores and stuff. You know they be having cutty little stuff, and I was like, I thought it was dope, I, and they was always telling me it was mafia, and it was like really Lucky Luciano yeah. style because my name is Luciano, and like Luciano named after a real gangster, Lucky Luciano, a real gangster. Yeah, yeah. You know? Lucky and, and there's also there's also Lucky Luciano. The rapper too Chicago It was also Lucky Luciano The rapper too yeah. You know But I ended up Getting the Lucky Lucci name From uh, From my OG Cause like My pops and them They was, they was all producers And rappers and you know, and, and they was hanging, they was hanging with goons too, and, and just one, one one of my one of my OGs, like one of my uncles, you know, shout out, you know, shout out three to God, shout out three, but uh, he gave me my rap name. He hey. heard me freestyle, and he was, and I was like, you know, it's Lucci, you know, I'm I'm with the gang, we coming with like that Niner Bang, you yeah. know, we do our thing, bitch, it's the cold gang, uh, and I was just like. <laughs> Busting a little freestyle And then he was like You ain't Lucci He was like You ain't Lucci He was like You lucky Lucci He was like You lucky Lucci And he was like He was like Drip like that right He was like Drip like that And I was like Oh I was like Oh dear I was like Blew my mind And then, and then from there I was lucky Lucci 16 years old uh, He, he oh, you know, wow. My OG gave me my rap name I heard that was super old school For was like when, you, when you're given your name When you're given your rap name What people call you and you know, I mean, I don't know. I just I was given my name. I mean, but my real name is Luciano, so it was, it was easy to to figure out Luchi. But you know, yeah, three three had hella drip. I mean, he still got drip. You know, he he kind of inspired my drip. The, one of the OGs inspired my drip for real. It's always that. You know, and then my, one of my other OGs inspired my my flow. He in, inspired my my tenacity with my raps. You know, and, and inspired me like because he rap he rapped some shit and it was so hard. I just had me thinking like, damn, like. Like, to this day, it was probably the hardest verse I've ever heard in my life. And I was like, yo. And he ended up, you know, now now he's not rapping no more. And, and he was just like, he had so much potential. But, he, you know, he gained me up, too. And I told him to this day, you know, I was like, I was like, you inspired me to do this shit, man. I was like, you inspired me to do this shit. For real. You know, and he heard he heard some of my new songs I recorded here recently. And, and he, he was proud of me. And he was proud of me. And, and, and that's, that's uh. You know that that's big shoes to fill. That's big shoes to fill. Like I'm really proud. Like, but it took. It I was recording since I was like you know 2016. So it took hella years to just even like just make some some decent slaps for real. You know, and and just figuring out different formulas and different rhyme schemes and different you know hooks and and cadences and until so my dad was like you should harmonize and and then so I came with that summertime with a Gemini, one of a kind shining yeah one of a kind time and yeah we so fly baby we so hot one of a Kind, shining, yeah, one of a kind, Tommy, yeah, yeah. 
And he was like, he was like, he, he was like, he was like, you gotta harmonize. He's like, he's like, yo, that is like OG game right there. He was like, it's your hooks. He's like, you got the hooks. So then I just upgrade. I just kept upgrade, 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 and, and until you know, I just I, I listen to people because I feel like God be talking to me. Yeah. I feel like God be talking through to me. people. I feel like God be talking to me for through real. Through people, right? And, yeah. and, and, I, and I was lucky enough, but. But yeah, I, you know, I spent a lot of time at that nonprofit. I got kicked out of school, so I had to go to continuation. I had a baby on the way. It was all the stuff that was going on. I was in the city. I was just on, you know, I was living with my grandma. I was living with my grandma. Shout out my grandma. Hey. Professional violinist, you know. Grandmas be so there. And shout the out my grandma. Cooks. Yeah, the shout out my cooks, grandma. Right? My dad was, was he was like, Right. Trying to get together But yeah, yeah. No, no I mean We're spoiled We're spoiled Grandma's got you We're spoiled Make you sure you're well fed We're spoiled Well taken care of right? we all, we, I mean we had gourmet food Gourmet Come food on, Be Better grandma's than the restaurant Grandma's cooked the best bro. Better than the restaurant Come on now it's Better than the important, restaurant It's important to have family structure Right It's important to have like, We only go to the restaurant food. When we want to go out yeah. and, and spend time together yeah. You know But we got We got to share the house Better than the restaurant My dad went to culinary school my dad went to culinary school. My dad really never cooked. Be chefing though. It up. Never cooked, or he does cook somewhere. Or he he got he got his own business called the Circadian Cuisine. Check oh, it out. Okay. Uh, yeah, non non profit, non profit. Is it a restaurant? Is it a catered thing? It's a it's a truck. 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 Truck food culture is huge. Yep. Right? Yeah. It's just crazy how many people got the Instagram and the truck and they pop up to your event with the cupcakes and the barbecue. And, and, and my girl likes to cook too. My girl uh, my girl black, so she cooks soul food. She's from Oakland. Okay. All her family's from you know, from the town and from the East Bay. So, you know, I'm I'm blessed. Like, you know, You're I, 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 good. I love I love that side too. The the ribs and the baked beans and mm. collard greens and, oh, and, 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 and you know, I you know of course everyone, of everyone says the cornbread. Yeah. Everyone says the cornbread. I'm not the biggest cornbread fan. I ain't gonna lie, I ain't the biggest cornbread. I, I just I like the ham though. I like the ham though. I, I like, like the, the ham though. I'm in the green. I like the yeah. ham though. On um, Thanksgiving, it'd it be it'd be like I go to her house. I rather. Yeah. I mean, I love my family, but her family just just does Thanksgiving just like the food tastes better. Just so good. They do Thanksgiving just so. It's just like it's hard. If it's you're hard to fortunate, with that. To, it's hard to compete yeah, with that. If you're fortunate to ever get invited to a black Oakland barbecue, like, it's hard to compete with that. You feel it's me? It's pretty good. My dad makes his own pizza dough, though. He makes okay. his own pizza dough. Yeah, that's he good. got his own recipe, and he 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 went to Sicily too. He that's because to, bread is really bad for you. So yeah. if you make it yourself, yeah. it's a lot better. Yeah, he went to yeah. Italy. He went to yeah. Italy, and and they taught him. They taught him in a brick oven, you yeah. know, how, how to make pizza. Yeah. And then he makes like really like, you know, uh, just weird topping, you know, seafood mixture, you know, vegetarian or or just meat, you know, just different uh, experimental pizzas. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them be be smacking, you know, different yeah. sauces, pesto, white sauce, you know, red sauce. Pizzas be different and, uh, in Italy, though, don't they? They're, they're thinner. Really, they're they're thinner. thinner. They're a lot thinner. I feel like they're a lot more light. A lot less meat. Too. Me? They're a lot more light. Right. You know? They're, they're more on the go. American yeah. pizza is very heavy. Yeah, American pizza is like you fucking like getting fat as fuck. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you just get fat as fuck. I mean, you know? there's grease on the crust. You know what like, I mean? Like, like a pizza he could make, it'd be so slammy. You just eat the whole pizza. You just eat the whole pizza. That's you what I'm talking to. about. You just eat the Ooh, whole is pizza. It, is it what's that thing where they got out here? Pizzeria Uno? Uno? Pizza, you know something wrong? Pizzeria, I, I never heard of it. Uno Pizzeria, I think I forget, but they make thin, thin, thin little pizzas, man. They good. They hella thin though. It's wild. They got a pretty, some pretty good, decent pizza spots in uh, in the Mission. Like yeah. up on up on Twenty Third, there's this place that sells like big ass slices. I always yeah. like, I always love going there and just grabbing cool. a big ass slice. I miss the deep dish, bro. You know, and I mm. like pesto. I'm like a really big. I'm pesto a huge pesto fan. fan. I love pesto. I don't Pesto's know what fire. pesto is, but it's fucking good. I know it ain't Pesto's good for fire. me. It's isn't it like stinging needles or like stinging nettles, crushed up stinging nettles. My grandma makes her own pasta. It's a she, crushed up green. Yeah, she yeah, makes she yeah. makes her own pasta from scratch, and she makes limoncello too. That's some real from, Italian yeah, shit. Yeah. She makes limoncello. She makes uh, you know, some. Some some liqueur, yeah. Some some you know limoncello, and you know it gets you fucked up worse than wine. This is the worst, best thing ever is people's cultures and food. You know, right, I mean? right. Cultures right. and food because American diet is great, hamburgers and pizza, but like that shit is horrible. Like, but Mexican. It's, I mean, Italian, honestly, Korean. American American food culture is like kind of like just the most regular. You know, I feel like the most regular and just mostly beef oriented. But like, yeah. like, like I said, I, I, and I said before, you know, you, you, you see, you know, animals and like gorillas and shit. They're big as fuck and they, they barely eat meat. You know, they, yeah. get, they get, you could like, like, well, they eat some, they eat some it, meat. It depends. It depends on like the fuel you're using for the, for your body, for what yeah. type of body type and what type of lifestyle you want to live. Yeah. You know, like, like, I think, you know. If you if you're an athlete, you got to eat like an athlete. Absolutely. If you, Absolutely. If, 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 you know, if you don't care about how, how you eat, I mean, I I be struggling a lot, you know, because I gained a lot of weight, 
you know, after my surgery, because I had a abdominal surgery uh, in 2021, and I, and I, like I said, I was always like 155 pounds, probably like 5'10", and I was just like always like kind of on the skinny side. And then after that surgery, I lost hella weight, lost all the weight in my legs, and then I spent like a year or two like rebuilding myself and like regaining hella weight. And I went out to the mountains, I lived out in the mountains, you know? This is like kind of like fast forward a little after, like I had my son and everything. And- um, What and mountains you live? <laughs> The uh, Sierra Nevada Mountains. What? Sierra Nevada Mountains. Yo, that's my like, dream to live in the mountains. Because, like, my dad, like like I said, the city stuff was cool, but it was mostly, like, my grandma. Like, it was my grandma's house. My grandma's holding it down. It's not my dad's shit, you know. Like, my dad and my uncles, you know, be staying there. But they they obviously, you know, once you get older, they had to branch out, get their own spots. And my dad, you know, he, he was, like, you know, work, you know, working out with the homies, and he ended up finding out about Jackson and, and the mountains in West Point, and, and you know, and getting interested in co you know, copping property, right. you know, and so he saved up like twenty five G's over some years, and uh, and, and bought some land, dope, and he bought some land, dope. And, and, and and you know, and he and, he, and we built built a house. I helped him build a house. That is and, so and dope. He, and he got Bro, the he got the, the water tank and the uh, solar and the batteries oh my, and the this shed. This is everything I want to do, bro. And, and the tractor and the old school and and and. And, and to get over the, the work permits, you, you build houses that connect from a deck. There's a deck that connects all three. There's like three structures. Because if you want to build a big structure, you got to have a hella, hella building permits. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, you also have to have permits for a septic tank, too. Like, right. if you want to take shits or if you want, like, warm water, you want purified water, just all those things, that, you know, play you know plays into it. But he got, like, you know, cool little, like, you know, two acre. Even. Wow. Yeah. I lived out there. I lived out there for, for like, a year or two. Wow. Well, pretty much like a year. Pretty much like a year not, I wouldn't say two Pretty much like a year Because Things Fell apart When I was living in San Francisco Last okay. time I was, You know Like after high school like I, I went to continuation After I got kicked out Of John O'Connell And I and I went to continuation In the Fillmore mm. At uh, Civic Center Secondary And you know It was It was it was dope I well, mean it, What it was, was it, it like was living out Were you happy It was dope Was it like just calm And peaceful in, in, the, in, the, in the mountains Yeah yeah, so I, so after the city shit w w was over with, and we went to the mountains, I had to because I was homeless and my grandma kicked me out. Okay, so I had to, and, you my, had to. and, and my dad was like offering that, right? You know, but he was like, "This place is still under construction, so you got to help, like, kind of build it." And so it made like, sense for you to come in. That's great, you know. Yeah. So and, and it was like I got to know my pops a, a hell of a lot more. Like it was almost like I got to know my pops more in that year it was than I ever did. It was meant to be, man. Than I ever did it in my whole life. Be. Like my yeah. whole life, I looked at my pops one way. You know, and I, I respected him, and I always thought he was like just super, like a like a MacGyver, jack of all trades, you know, mechanic, chef, you know, right. strong man, you know, carpenter, you know, building speakers, <laughs> computers, just all types of crazy <laughs> weird shit. He's just like oddball, you know, it's real oh, Scorpio it's shit, real that's Scorpio dope. shit, just odd and fucking really talented and smart. But he just wasn't really social, like he wasn't really social. I just noticed mm. that. So like when we when we did, you know, get on the property. It was crazy because my ears would ring at night. I couldn't sleep at night because it was so fucking quiet. And wow. growing up in the city, all you hear is the freeway. Because down the street where, where my grandma lives, yeah, you, you hear the freeway. No, it's tough. It's tough. So it was so, like yeah. all you hear is cars all night and fucking shit going on and crashing or yeah. whatever the hell is going on. And, and you're just used to like that minimum sound. Yeah. And going out in the mountains, my ears would ring at night. My ears would ring at night. Like you, like you, like your ears popped or some shit, or like yeah. you were like popped and dizzy. Like, like my ears would ring at night, and I and I felt this ominous feeling because after like one or two in the morning, you, I mean, up up leading towards the night, you hear crickets and you hear frogs and you hear animals, but once it gets like one or two in the morning, everything just shuts off. Like everything, like it's just pitch black and just moonlight crazy, and there's no man. sound it's like the crickets fell asleep or something like man. that's their bedtime like that's their lullaby and that's when the bigfoot <laughs> is dream. walking around that's when the bigfoot and the bears and the skinwalkers Wolves. and everything else is walking around out there and and, and there's a lot of spirits out there because a lot of things die bro and, 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 I mean? and, I, and I wasn't living in the main house because my dad was living in the main house and there's the there's the kitchen house and then there's the bathroom house and then there's the shed and then there's like you know the, the driveway and, and the canopy and, and all, all that shit But then we were in Like a camper And then there was Another camp We had two campers mm -hmm. So we were in Like the bigger camper Bus bus house And then So we were living In a bus house For a year And that shit was Tough mm -hmm. That shit was like Just It just humbled me I mean you know I, It was Living with grandma Spoiled by grandma In the two story house Million dollar house In San Francisco I'm living in the bus mm -hmm. With my girl And my girl Came with me too 
my girl, I, she was from Oakland. We was dating, and you know, everything fell apart in the city. And I was like, I have to go out there, and you could either, you know, we could either cut it off right now, or, or you can come with. You feel me? I, I don't want to force you though, because I know you want to, you want to be in the bay, and I don't want to force you to leave the bay just because I have to. But I have to. So this right. is what I got to do. And then she said, I'm not leaving you. So I want to go. I want to go with you wherever you're going. Want to go. So I was like, all right, cool. So we went up there and we lived in the bus for a fucking year. That's crazy. And it was, and then me and her, we 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 grew ten times closer too. And then, um, and then yeah, and like you know, in the middle of the night, you know, like uh, we didn't have a bathroom in our bus. So sometimes like you want to go to the bathroom at three in the morning or four in the morning, take a piss, and you just be scared shitless out there. You gotta walk down the little hall in the pitch black and. Take a p- Sometimes I'll just I'll just open the door In the window And just piss off My little uh, My little steps Or like I just piss in the bush Right there I, I, I wouldn't want to Go out into that darkness Cause you just don't know What's out there And, and you're not You're not a forest, predator you, you know I mean I mean, You got the straps But you know You feel me You're not a predator though Like out there You, you could be preyed on You could be prey And I believe in aliens too And I believe in Bigfoot And I believe right. in all types of shit And sometimes you do Hear those weird feelings And this one night My, my girlfriend was there And I was at work Cause I used to work At the casino over there Cause I I was like one of the only jobs I could get. Right. I was working at the casino, Jackson Rancheria. Shout out to them too. That was dope. I was working, working at the casino was fucking dope as fuck. I was working in the restaurants. But um, yeah, she said that something shook the bus in the middle of the night. That's crazy. And she was like, what the fuck? Uh, she just grabbed the knife and was like, uh, what's going to happen? Uh, you know, what's about to happen? Wild. You know, like, what, what if some fucking. People crept up on our on our property and try to rob us and kill us. Like you never happens. know. Like you it out there happen. in the country. Like people and people could kill you out there. It's, it's people, rural. people could it's kill you out rural. there. Hey man, I want to uh, thank you for coming on, man. Uh, we've been at this for an hour now, so you know I gotta let you go. But I, before yeah. we get out of here, I want to talk about uh, what music you got coming out, man. You got oh some yeah, so coming out? the the line between love and hate um, recorded here at you know Craig Lee Studios. You know, shout out my boy. You feel me? This has been dopest, dope, dope, dopest. Come you feel on. me? And you know, this year we got some singles coming out. I got the video "Summertime" on all platforms. I go by the name of Lucky Lucci from the Four One Five. You follow me at Lucky Four One Five Lucci on Instagram. You know, Lucky Lucci Eleven on Twitter. Um, and I'm doing, and I'm doing more videos for my album. And, and I'm doing "Most Hated in My City" next, and then I'm gonna probably do a couple more. And then, uh, right here, and man. we're doing marketing, and we're doing promotion, and I already got a guy, you know, on the East Coast that's that's helping me out. Shout out my boy, and you know, we got a plan. You know, we, we the the next goal is 100k, the next goal is the, the next goal is two 250k, and then 500k, and then a mil. And we we're going up from here. We try we try to be professionals in this craft. We try to put the bay on the map. We try to rep for the West Coast, and this is what we love to do. And and, and we just being ourselves. And, and, and shout out Sammy, and, and shout out my boy. Shout out Brock, man. She was she was the I, I want to work with her more because she that it, it, it was the best experience it was the best experience my best work it's my best work out right now shout out my guy go out my guy on the ground he's really yeah, moving he's been consistent for a minute in it uh he reads here so man he records here so we obviously fuck with him and got his back thank you bro you're a seller of a person man i'm proud to know you i'm proud to have you as a 415 representative yes, sir, man. Yes, sir. we're gonna get out of here like you said instagram lucky 415 lucci this my guy we both want to wish y'all a great weekend because we're going to have one. We're extreme life livers, y'all.